Hey everyone, Gary Simon here of CourseSetro.com and today I'm going to show you how to structure this layout using Flexbox properties and I'm doing this because I recently started working on somewhat of a similar layout here although nowhere near as ugly and I had some difficulties getting the positioning correct and mainly I'm talking about this text input field at the bottom and making sure it stays at the bottom of the browser and this overflow scrolling div here uh, extending all the way and filling up the necessary space. So I'll be taking you one step at a time through the creation of this layout and hopefully in the end, you will have a good understanding of how to use Flexbox in the future, especially with vertically positioning items. So let's get started. Oh, but real quick, before we begin, make sure you check out my site, CourseCetro.com, where you're going to find a bunch of courses on modern design and development. A lot are free, and the others you can access for the cost of buying me like a six-pack each month. That's it. Now, also, it probably wouldn't hurt to subscribe here on YouTube, and be sure to make sure the notifications are turned on. All right, let's get back to it. Now, because this is solely a CSS tutorial, I'm not going to bother with setting up some sort of robust development environment with unnecessary bells and whistles. Instead, we're just going to create two files in a single folder. So I've created a folder here. It's empty and I'm using Visual Studio Code, by the way, which is free from Microsoft. And I'm going to create an index.html right here. And also you can follow along with the written tutorial, which is linked in the very first line of the description here in YouTube. And you can just copy this initial boilerplate for HTML right here. So we'll go ahead and save that. I'm going to create another file. We're going to call that style.css. As we can see, it's linked right here as style CSS. And we're going to leave that empty just for now. So the first thing we're going to do is define a two column flex box layout. So Basically, I'm not going to be bothered using any type of CSS framework for this, like, you know, Bootstrap or Balma or Foundation. Instead, we're just going to keep things simple and custom. So in index.html, the first thing we'll do is within the body tags, of course, we're going to put two divs. So the first one is going to be sidebar. And the next one, we'll give it a div of class, content. All right, we'll save and great. So now in our style.css, we're going to reference the body element and I'm going to get rid of any default margin. Font family, we'll make Arial. And then we're also going to put in display flex and we're going to make the body element the flex box container itself. We're also going to add flex direction row, and that means any children within the body tag, which is pretty much any HTML essentially, uh, will be situated in rows as opposed to columns. So we could also change this to columns, for instance, if we wanted the columns to stack. All right, so next we're going to reference our sidebar, and we're gonna put the background gray just so we can see things. Width, we'll make just 15% and padding 1EM. Next, we have our content, and here, the background will be light gray, and the width will, of course, be 85%. Okay, so let's go ahead and save, and visit the file in our browser, the index.html. We'll see that we have our columns here, and notice how the height of the columns fills the browser viewport. Now, what if we wanted to add a horizontal navigation header above these columns right here at the top? Will it still work? Well, let's see. Let's go ahead to our index.html. And I'm just going to real quickly copy and paste in just some initial HTML here for our header and our unordered list. And we can see that it consists just of a header element and an unordered list element with three bullshit links. Okay, so let's save this and we'll go back real quickly to the browser to see what has happened. All right, so that's obviously not what we want. This is happening, of course, because header is a child of body, which will align all children as a row right next to each other. So to fix this, let's go ahead and modify our HTML and CSS just a bit. So when it comes to our div class of sidebar and content, what we wanna do 
is wrap them in their own div and give it a class of wrapper. All right, great. So now, after that, let's go to our style CSS and we're going to reference our wrapper. And we're simply going to move these two properties inside of there. All right, next, let's go ahead and style up our menu so it's not a vertical menu. And I'm just going to paste some initial rule sets here just because they're not really relevant to this. We are using, however, a flex container on the unordered list element, which will mean any children within it, such as the LI, the list item elements, will now have a flex direction of row, which means they will write a line. Uh, justify content is also, um, we have flex end, which will push it to the very right side of the browser. So now if we save this and we go back to our browser, we'll find, that our header now works as we want it to, but the height of the columns no longer extends to the bottom of the browser. So why is that? Well, initially, these two columns, their parent was simply the body element. So if we get out the inspector, we click on body, we'll see that it were, by default, it extends to 100% of the browser. So now their parent happens to be div class of wrapper and it doesn't, it's a custom class. So we have to add a height property. So let's go ahead back and we'll go back up to wrapper and we're gonna have height 100 VH as in a viewport height. So if we save this, we'll see that it has now worked. However, look just over here. We have this very annoying unwanted scroll bar. Well, that's because we have to subtract the height of the header element from the height property of wrapper. So going back up here, or down here rather, let's reference header. And I'm going to give it a definitive height of 60 pixels. And I didn't just kind of pull this out of my ass. I didn't, basically got out the inspector. I worked within the CDSS to make sure it was pretty consistent with the current height as it is by default. And then we come up to wrapper we're going to use calc, we take 100 viewport height and we subtract 60 pixels. So now if we save and go back, refresh, it goes away. And you see everything will work as expected. Awesome. So now let's say for example that this is a chat app and in the content container right here, we want to add an element to display chat messages and at the very bottom, always align to the bottom of the, view, the viewport, a text area, not a text field, but maybe just an input type of text. All right, so to do that, what we'll do is come back over here into our HTML, and this is where we wanna work. Usually the sidebar would have some type of uh, menu or whatever, and we're not going to mess with that. And we're going to add just two different divs. Uh, one is going to be a chat container, And the one inside of it is going to be div ID of chat. This will actually hold the chat messages themselves. And secondary would be the input type of text. And we'll give it a placeholder value of chat here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is save this and let's look at the result as it stands just here initially. All right, so we don't see any type of messages Going back, because I kind of just forgot that, I'm going to paste in just some filler lorem ipsum text. And it just gives us uh, a few paragraphs or a few sentences to work with. Okay, so obviously we need to work with this in our CSS file to get this fixed up as needed. So first we'll reference our chat container. So the reason I used two different divs to do this is because chat container is going to be a new flex container similar to how we did it with the body tag and the wrapper tag uh, also the unordered list and we're going to set the, the flex direction this time to column and that's because we're vertically stacking this chat messages which happens to be the chat id and then also the input 
So to do that, we're going to put in flex direction is a column. Display flex, of course. Min height will be 100%. And we'll make the color of the chat messages gray. Next, we have our chat container. We want this to extend all the way across. We're going to add flex one, and this is very important. Overflow Y will be scroll. Give it some padding and box sizing will be border box. And this happens to fix an issue with uh, the scroll bar. So then input type will be text. Put that in there and with 100% padding 10 pixels. So let's save this and go back and refresh. All right, awesome. I'm going to real quickly just copy and paste a bunch of times or shift alt and down and save this just to simulate what it would actually look like in a real chat message context. I'll move the browser around. We'll see that the footer stays no matter what. And there we go. All right, guys, so hopefully you were able to learn quite a bit. I, I just realized I didn't really explain what this guy did. If we remove this and go back and refresh, we'll see it goes all the way down and it completely breaks the layout. And that's why I said adding that flex property to one was really important. When basically adding that property, let's go back and just fix that real quick. Adding the flex one property means that basically let all the items or the children be the same length. So since we're only applying it to one of the two children, you know, not the input down here, it will take up the entire space minus the height of this input. So just to demonstrate this, if we were to take flex one and add it onto our input, which is also a child of the Flexbox container up here, and we go back and refresh, we'll see it takes up equal space right here, which we obviously don't want. We only want that for the messages. We only, only want it to take up as much space as it needs to. All right, so again, just to fix that and removing it, there we go. All right, so hopefully you learned a lot. Check, check out Corsetro.com for a lot of other front end and also even back end development tutorials and courses. I'm Gary Simon once again, and I'll talk to you later.